Hi, everybody, and welcome. I want you to imagine for a moment that you're in your 40s and you buy your father's beer company for $500,000 back in 1985. At the time, the brewery was producing about 137,000 barrels of beer a year. And you grow it now over these years into one that produces over 3 million barrels annually and is now America's oldest brewery at 192 years old. Imagine also that you're on Forbes' list of the 400 richest people in America. And you drive a Chevy, you wear Wrangler jeans, and you still come to work every day. Oftentimes seen driving the forklift to load beer onto the trucks. And you do all of this at the beautiful age of 78 years young. Well, listen, you won't have to imagine what that was like after listening to my guest today. Welcome to season two, episode four of my Back to Life podcast, Finding Fulfillment After 50. I am your host, Danny Bader, and with my guest today, Dick Yingling, you'll hear about this journey. Dick's the president and sole owner of Yingling Brewery. Listen in as Dick talks about the intuition that led him to buy the brewery, how he works with his four daughters in his beer business, Listen also as Dick talks about the power of purpose and passion in your life, especially as we move into the second half of our lives. And oh yeah, Dick's going to let you know about the importance of a daily nap. So let's get into our conversation with Dick Yingling. Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of our Back to Life podcast, Finding Fulfillment After 50. I'm your host, Danny Bader. I'm really excited about our guest today, Dick Yingling. You heard about Dick and his experience in the intro, so we'll kind of jump right into it. So, Dick, thanks a lot. I appreciate your time and, and what I think will be an insightful conversation. Well, I hope so. Uh, appreciate you being here. Oh, yeah. Happy to come in and uh, uh, take care of our company here the way you are. Absolutely. 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 Always have um, known your product. I know we'll talk about it. You bought the brewery from your father in 1985. That's correct. Right, so I graduated in Allen at Allentown College in 1985, and I got some families up here: the Angelos, the McCalls, the Plachkos. Oh yeah, and uh, Elmo. Yeah, they used, to, they used to bring Yingling beer down to college, and we would say, you know, what the heck is this? And it was good. It was very good. Imported from China. <laughs> Imported from Pottsville is what it is. And uh, we're happy to be coming to you. You can hear kind of the echo here. We're coming to you live from the brewery. Um, the nation's oldest brewery. So, yeah, it's good that I have time with you because some of those guys said to me when I said I was going to come up and chat with you, they're like, how the hell did you get off the forklift? <laughs> is what, is what they asked. So we'll talk about that. Why don't you, you, you bought the brewery in 1985. You were how old? Uh, I think I was 42 at the time. 42? Yeah. So what, what was it like? Give everybody a quick kind of Cliff Notes version of life you growing up, high school, College, Lycoming, back brewery, and then we'll get into after buying. Okay. Well, I went to high school in Pottsville and uh, played basketball and baseball there. Played mm-hmm. against some of your friends, apparently. Uh, and uh, uh, the Zach really enjoyed that. The Zach's from Hazel and Frankie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I enjoyed that. that jar- we were in the East Penn Lake, the old East Penn Lake. Right. Uh, Pottsville and Hazel, the, the rest of them were Allentown School, Allentown Bethel, and they were. They were good ball clubs. They were really great ball clubs. Yeah. Uh, a lot of guys went away to good colleges, good basketball schools, and uh, we get killed. I mean, we could not play with those guys, but it was it was still fun going into pack gyms and uh, sure, and back in the it was day. a lot of fun. Yeah. Good time, good time. So then um, you went to like only college uh, for a year. For yeah, a year, played baseball up there for a year. Right, and. Uh, after we became successful, they didn't, they didn't know I existed mm-hmm. until I, I bought the brewery and we got very successful. And I played baseball for uh, a guy named Bud Whitehill, okay. who got cancer. He's also the wrestling coach up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got cancer and uh, they lost him and they were starting the foundation. So the school came after me to help uh, uh, support his foundation, mm-hmm. which I was glad to do. Well, sure. as time went on, they they recognized me as the alumni of the class of 65. Now, I was in and out of there in 1962. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Some girl came up to me and she said, Yingling, she said, I don't remember you. I said, well, I got through here in a year. I said, I was very smart. And, and accelerating was right. excellent. And, uh, you know, I got through here in one year. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you work at the brewery, I'm sure, because you're fifth generation. I started working at the brewery when I was 15, mm-hmm. uh, not in the 
land itself. We had a lot of properties locally. Uh, they were mostly bar rooms and uh, they were knockdown properties, really. And, right. uh, but they were good bars. They sold a lot of beer in those, in those places. And I'd work on the roofs and putting up fences. I weren't going to carpenter we had. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't own them anymore. But mm -hmm. uh, anyway, that's where I started. And then the next year I worked with the carpenter again. So I was 16 and then I started in the brewery itself. And, uh, mm -hmm. That's what I always wanted to do. So when they approached me to buy the brewery for my father in 85, I said, absolutely, I'll buy it. So right. Now, were you here in 85? Because you left for a little while, right? Uh, I was not here. I was here in 85. 84 is when I, I sold my, I bought a beer distributorship. I was a Paps Blue Ribbon and Rolling Rock uh, distributor locally. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we had two local breweries, uh, the Yingling Brewery, of course, and the other one was the Bavarian Brewery down in the Mount Carbon District. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, they went out of business two years after I bought, bought uh, my beer distributorship. And they sold a lot of beer locally. Mm -hmm. And they all all the bars and people started switching brands because right. there was no Bavarian anymore. A lot of them came to Italy, but a lot of them uh, started buying Paps and Rolling Rock. So I sure. did terrific. And I moved out of the building that I was in up in New Philadelphia, which is about uh, eight miles from here, and I uh, go to a big uh, wholesale retail store. Mm -hmm. and did, I did very well for those five and a half years that I was in that business. Mm -hmm. And then they came to me with my dad's sickness and, mm -hmm. and uh, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll right. Buy it. You right. Know, I had to sell that. So you left here, though. You're working at the brewery, and you left because difference of well, difference of opinions and how we were going to survive. I mean, we did everything by hand in those days. All the cases were loaded by hand right across the street. Oh, so yeah. You do, if somebody comes in here and takes the tour of the brewery, they see how we operated years ago, but now we have a warehouse up there, and that's what the whole problem was with my dad. <laughs> he wouldn't build it. Right. And he said, you can't get trucks in there. And I said, you can. So that's what I did even at that time. Right. Uh, I knew what I knew. So you knew yeah. better than my dad. I knew right? better, yeah. Right. 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 We're going to talk about your four daughters and see if any of them know better than you. Yeah. They probably you know. They do, but they don't have the experience I had. They think they do. Right. So it's funny, though. I saw somewhere where you left for a number of years, but when you left, your dad said you would be back in two weeks. In two weeks. It's 11 right. years. 11 years. I'm yeah. stubborn. I'm a stubborn girl. Yeah, that's okay. It served you well. I come from a little bit of that lineage myself. So when you buy the brewery, then um, what was the status of it as a business? Successful, not successful, they growing? Were, they were doing okay. They they were selling a lot of uh, low end beers mm -hmm. at that time. An old German brand. Uh, they had what the Bavarian label, and they were selling that. It's a low end brand, so the volume was there, but the profitability wasn't there. Right. And uh, I came across the opportunity to. Develop a new brand in the lager mm -hmm. in about 87, I'd say, 87 or 88. And uh, the lager brand, we got it up to State College and the kids yeah. took to it. We went to Philadelphia with David, uh, with David Casanelli's father, Tony, sure. who was a sales manager of the wholesaler shop. Oh, yeah, great guy. And, and yes, and, and he took our brand and just covered Philadelphia with it. I and remember we, we exploded down yeah. there. It was unreal. I was tending bar in King of Prussia at Hulahans in the late eighties, right around nineties. I remember. Yeah. You know, it was people people just come in, they ask for a lot. Yeah. You, you never so you did a great that job. That was one of my inventions. People couldn't say Yingling or they you know, they knew we were there, but the, the Yingling is a little hard word to to ask for. So they just I just said to them, get them used to just asking for a lager. Give me a lager. Right. Glass of lager, right? And that worked. So it's almost the brand, like yeah. Kleenex or like Kleenex or Q -tip. Q -tip. Bar. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So let me ask you this question, Nick, because you know you and I talked and getting ready for this. A lot of interviews you do are about the business and growing the business, but I, I want to kind of focus more on you and how you think um, your philosophy of life. So you buy the business then for a half a million bucks. Is it was? It was somewhere in uh, I mean, right. a good investment back then, right? Eighty-five. Yeah. So there's risk, there's uncertainty, there's fear. Probably were they present when you took over? No, I never. I had first of all, I had a tremendous amount of confidence in in our brands, mm -hmm. the, the beer, and we oh, didn't have all the brands. We had lager, porter. Uh, well, we didn't have lager when I started, mm -hmm. but we had porter, ale, and beer. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I had confidence in our brewmaster and our employees. And I didn't want to see these employees lose their jobs. Sure. Uh, 
because they had worked here all their life. It was fathers and sons that worked here. And I felt a responsibility to uh, keep this place going. And what, what would you do here? You're next to the biggest Catholic church in, in, in the Scoop of County. Uh, and you're going to have a, a building here falling down. It's yeah. actually another brewery that closed and they had all bounds. Uh, or had to tear them down. So anyway, I always had confidence that our brand would sell and we could expand it. And we got lucky. I mean, there is you know, a certain amount of skill, I suppose. But yeah, uh, the big thing is to have confidence in your company and its employees. And uh, we won. Right. right. We did. And I know you talk a lot about luck, but I believe luck, luck has an equation to it, right? This, this, this equals luck. Right. You make your own luck. So what do you do then, you know, as an entrepreneur and as a leader, when people, when fear and risk and uncertainty show up for people? How do you lead them through that? Whether it's about business or just in life sometimes. And certainly this COVID had about that, right, this past year. Well, the younger people are afraid of the COVID, to use that as an example. But uh, we let them take off, work from home. Uh, the employees all come in and work. We kept them here. We got COVID in the plant. We didn't close those areas. Uh, but Adam, we sent people home and told them to stay home until they were sure they didn't get it and be tested before they come back. Right. We did everything that the rules and regulations state. Sure. We, we're, we're getting through it. Yeah. What was your message to this leader? I didn't have a message. I, I just all my message was do what you have to do. And we need we need uh, people to run the packaging operations, the brew houses, and all that. I mean, we need you here. Uh, if you want to close down, we'll just close down and do what we have to do. But nobody would do that. The guy, the guys, the guys understand to keep our be alive, we can't run out of fear for it. We, we know how long this is going to last. Sure. We're in the second year. They always had a focus on forward, just keep moving forward. Right? Keep whoever what you're doing, you know, saying, we have no problem with the guys. A lot of the girls that do it in marketing and uh, graphics design and stuff like that, they were scared. You know, do what you have to right. do. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you took over in 85, did you, did you have any goals for this? Did you have a vision? Did you think it would become what it is now? I wanted to keep it alive and keep it alive financially successful. We were okay, but uh, you know, I knew if we could grow this thing, we were going to need a lot of money, a lot of capital to to uh, uh, buy new equipment, better equipment, faster equipment, mm -hmm. and uh, probably increase the capacity. So we built a building here that we sold out of here before it was even completed. Mm -hmm. and in '97, uh, we, we we finally. Get the bullet and started to build a brewery over at Milk Ray. Right, right. right. And, uh, and while that was being built, we were still out of beer. And the Stroh family decided they wanted to get out of the beer business. They had purchased uh, the Schlitz breweries, which I think were 12 or 13 of them. They were huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned a real lesson there because you just don't buy something that's too big. Uh, you got a fully capacity of it. You can't run that. Uh, it's in most cases with them, it was like a seven to nine billion dollar brewery, and they weren't selling enough beer to keep that brewery alive. So, yeah. uh, we found them, uh, they had a plant in Tampa, Florida, it was a million and a half barrels. And I went down there and took a look at it. I talked to the stroke people, and they said they'd sell it to us. So, I went down and looked at it and asked the plant manager, Can you get me a workforce? We're going to sell You don't know who we are. Mm -hmm. That brewery had been bought and sold, I don't know how many times, Schlitz. Schwitz built it, Apps owned it, sold it to Strohs, and then they all went out of business. Yeah. And uh, I ended up buying they don't know who you're like this camp of Florida. <laughs> so I just said, bear with us, we'll, we'll get this thing going. And now they're doing about a million and a half barrels. Wow. Yeah. So they're right up to the capacity. We've increased the uh, size of the, the capacity in that plant, the uh, new blue house, and then a lot of water. So yeah, it's it. That's probably, they tell me that it's one of the best jobs in Tampa, which is very rewarding. Yeah. We have good people down there. A lot of Cubans, a lot of blacks down there mm -hmm. working in our plant. They're great people. Great people in the day. That's good. So when you, you bought the business, you're 42, then you turned 50. What was it like turning 50 for you? It was age? It was just Because you're 78 year. now, right? I'm 78 you know, now. Damn, you do. Well, I don't know why. You know, I don't know why. I don't, why. It's, I don't feel like, I don't feel 78, but I'm starting to age. You know, I, uh, my age is catching up with me, but uh, uh, I still put 10 to 11 hours a day on here. I enjoy it. Yeah. I 
50 and 60 years old, though, I mean, did anything change no. for you? No. It's just a number. It's just another number. The, the uh, probably from the age of 45 to 60 is like a blur. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were so busy and keeping, keeping improving the, the, the. So you had no time to age. I had no time to worry about it. No time um, to get old. Yeah. And then the, the children came in with me. Uh, I asked them, I said, look, I had before I built the Berea in Potsdam. Yeah. And bought the one in Tampa. You had no come to Jesus area. Yeah. Well, I just said, are you, are you kids interested before I make this investment? Because I'm not going to make it if I don't have somebody in the family that's going to be uh, in line to take it over. Mm -hmm. And they all said, almost in unison, uh, we all want to be here, mm -hmm. which shocked me. I mean, I got my teary eye, you know. And, uh, so that was very rewarding, and then we went ahead with the three over, over here, what the one in Tampa, put a whole new kegging system in, all on a loan, all on a loan from the uh, PNC Bank and the MT Bank mm -hmm. uh, to build a brewery over here. When they found out I bought a brewery in Tampa, they said, well, what are you, you know, how are you going to pay this loan off? Because you're building a brewery, you bought a brewery. I said, look, you're getting paid. I'll never it. forget the guy. He said, well, what are you doing? How can you do this? Right. And uh, I said, well, we're, we're paying our bills. So what are you worried about? If I don't buy this plant in Tampa, we're going to lose all the things that we work for yeah. in eastern Pennsylvania, Delaware, and South Jersey, where we, we were selling beer. Right. I said, we're going to lose everything. Mm -hmm. I said, if we can't supply people with beer, we're out of business. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, right. I mean, you know, you're going to pay, so yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah, you know, what was your what was your biggest um, you would say if you talk about that? Dick, what was your biggest challenge, most intense challenge professionally with the group over the years? Well, I would say the biggest challenge is, is working with your wholesalers to get them to really get behind your brand. I mean, they're they're great at getting behind your brand when you're in a wall. Now we've leveled off, and we're we're doing well. We're Okay, mm -hmm. but when you're, you're the hottest brand in the market, how does all these crap movies they went in exist years? It's sure. Uh, Corona's another brand. Uh, there's 48 million barrels or something like that of imported beers coming into this country. Now, think of the jobs that have been created for people who are drinking American beers. Our beers are as good as sure. everything that comes into this country. Yeah. And uh, uh, th think of all the jobs that have been created, probably. It would probably encompass at least 10 major breweries. Mm -hmm. At least 10. For more American yeah, beer, but hundreds of thousands of people working in this country. So yeah. that's what we're we're trying to get is uh, get those customers to think uh, American. Yeah, it's yeah, so all about relationships. It doesn't have to be ours, but it, yeah, it's about that. Relationships yeah. with the customers yes. and the bank. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Any personal challenges that you would say over life? The biggest one or two personal challenges? Stay healthy, that's all. Yeah. Uh, stay healthy. I told my doctor a little bit to get money. I understand. I don't know whether to make that or not, but I'm working at it. You know, the first thing you got to do is quit smoking. And how's that going? That's not going good at all. Uh, yeah. He retired. I got another doctor. He retired. Now I'm my third doctor in the same. You're out living your doctors. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I said, you can't retire. You got to keep me alive. Uh -huh. well, you are fine and you're healthy. Well, besides loving what you do and this, this passion for the brewery and the people here, is that really the driver for you that you would say keeps you going and strong? It's, um, what keeps me going is to get the kids, the, the, the daughters that are, they're all working. Uh, get a bit tune of what we might have gone through uh, 50, 60 years ago mm -hmm. when things were bad. And I don't forget that. We say, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. Because it's, it's all experience. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 you know, a lot of our audience is over 50 for this podcast. I'm 57, so I guess that's that's kind of why they follow. So I'm sure a lot of people out there are having, where they have, a, 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 you know, a, whatever, hundreds of millions of dollars you do a year in revenue. And a family business. I know as we, we get older, our kids get older and they meet people and they have kids and they think differently than us. So you said earlier that, that you knew more than your dad or however that went down. Right. What do you think? What, what what should we do when we're dealing as we get older, when we when we're dealing with our children and they come at life differently than us? Well, they all have everybody has a different talent. I had a different talent than my 
fun. I mean, the people send me to office mm-hmm. all the time, and, uh, and I was never in the office. Even today, I don't even have one. Yeah, uh, my office is in the back of a gift shop. This photograph is close. And and watch things. They get two queries running up there, and I watch them, make sure they're running efficiently, see mm-hmm. what, make sure we're doing the right thing. But uh, the kids never lived through the rough days, and I did, and they can't get out of their mind. Mm-hmm. But I, when I would buy school, we built the brewery over there, which was long. We bought a whole new equipment. We bought a lot of equipment from in house and Bush. They were bringing out a packaging line. We bought it, mm-hmm. it ran. Uh, but now we're at the point we buy new stuff. We buy right. uh, new bu- uh, bottle fillers, uh, new this, new that. And, uh, so, how do you feel at that point in life now? We, we oh, yeah. grow into that. Kids want to buy new of everything all the time. Right. Yeah. And, rough, rough days. And, and how do you, how do you communicate that, that to them, right? When, when the next generations come up and they've had it easier than us, certainly easier than your generation. Yeah, my dad's still my dad ninety one, right? So I hear those stories as well. Um, how do you communicate that, that to them? You, you, you tell them. You, you, you tell just, them. just tell them. You just tell them. Uh, you know, you, you don't remember the days of the fifties and sixties when people in the office told me they said you better go to college. Uh, you're not going to make it financially. This was a secretary that was up in the office, and she did the deposits, and she said, "We we need Friday's deposit to make the payroll." Right, and and. Uh, they said, well, we'll make it, we'll make it, and we'll get through this thing. And my grandfather was still alive at that time. It was back in 1963, and that's when he passed away. Mm-hmm. I guess the fall of 63, but uh, I, I'll never forget that when you tell him that. And uh, that moves in your mind. Sure. Right so how important, as we've talked right now, there's, there's a theme of you're always, you're always looking forward, right? We'll get through, we're going to meet capacity, we're going to, we're going to modernize the plant, we're going to make payroll, we're going to get through COVID. How important is that for people to always have that, that vision of, yeah, the times are tough right now and, and they're a bit shitty and we're going to move through it. How important is well, that? Well, the big thing is to keep the people working and, and uh, you know, our draft year, our, our draft year is, uh, has taken a real slobber in the last uh, year of the quarter mm-hmm. uh, because the bars and restaurants are closed down and, and uh, it's, you know, it's 25 to 28% of our business. The national average is 10 Wow. I mean, Bud does 10, 11 percent of their business. Yeah. Draft, Noah Force is probably around the same, nine or ten, and, and here we are at twenty five to twenty eight percent, and we we got clobbered. And uh, it's okay, we'll get through it. Sure. Yeah, I didn't get rid of anybody. We had things for them to do, and, and we kept people to keep the people working. It's coming back now. Florida is great because the governor down there has things open. You can go to restaurants and. Uh, People are working, they're having the same problem as up here. They're collecting uh, the, the, the COVID money. Yeah, the COVID they, money. They're they not going back work. to work at restaurants, but our guys, we've had no problem. We didn't pay enough for yeah. it. Yeah, it's compared to what they're making. Yeah. Uh, so we, we just we plug it away and we're getting our volume back as things open up and be fine. Mm-hmm. So the, the answer is we, we just kept people working. And, yeah. Uh, didn't get rid of it. We didn't lay anybody off. Lay nobody off. No, that's great. Yeah. W- would you do anything differently as you look back on your seventy eight years? Any regrets? No. no. I would have done probably the same thing. That's my mentality. If you're wrong, I probably did a lot of things wrong, but uh, uh, we got through them. Uh, I, I do a lot of things by instinct. Right. I, I, I've seen certain things and that work and certain things that don't. We brought a lot of new people in to, to do things. And I tried to tell uh, an individual how to do it. He said, just let me go. If you want to keep me here, listen to me. Mm-hmm. And, and I do. Mm-hmm. You have to listen to your people. Mm-hmm. I, I usually start out by not listening to them. And then they, they say, look, if you don't want to listen to me, I might as well go somewhere else. And That's I right. say, okay, don't do that. Right. Stay with me. And uh, the excellent people. I mean, yeah. I'm very fortunate. I have a lot of excellent management people and, and the hourly guys, most, almost every one of them, yeah. really good people. Yeah. You know, when we make mistakes in life, right? We make them from too intuition. And we don't, we don't want to make them, right? We don't wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to make a stupid decision today. What, what do you do? How do you move past it? Or how do you coach other people that came and say, oh, Dick, I'm sorry I did that? Like, okay. So many people hold on to crap. Don't they? Yeah, they do, but you gotta say, look, everybody makes mistakes. Don't make a habit out of it. That's mm-hmm. all. Uh, 
being in business is a gamble. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a risk, mm -hmm. you know, investing in a brewery, investing in, especially in this day and age, we have 8,000 breweries. And I thought this was 70. 70? 70. 70 breweries. And I thought that was a big number. Wow. And, uh, you know, today there's 8,000 of them and everybody's making beer in the bathtub mm -hmm. in their backyard. And, and uh, some of them are doing well. Some are making decent beer. But that's a bad tub beer. Not so good. Well, some of them are probably okay. I don't know. I, I haven't been in a lot of them. But uh, yeah. sometimes I, mean, I go to Florida. And, uh, if there's one local, I'll go in and just see what his beer is like. You wear Yangling gear or not? Uh, yeah, I wear it. And, and they're interested in the, and they appreciate the fact that I commit to cool. Oh, yeah, to you know, they're they're okay. They're good people. Yeah, yeah. Well, it seems to me that you you know you keep your eye on your competitors, but you, you focus on what you can control here, right? We do what's economically sensible for us to do. Uh, right. There's seltzers out there in the market. We have a business model. We make beer. We make good beer. Yes, All our do. products are are good. Uh, they're not for everybody's taste, but there's something in our portfolio that is for everybody's taste. Unless you want a seltzer, and I don't want to get. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, know, but they're, hey, they're doing well with it. So it's not less than yeah, yeah, yeah. some of these guys. Right. And that's what I like about your philosophy is yeah, let people do it and you're some wrong. Yeah. Stay stay mm -hmm. in your own wheelhouse, yeah. so to speak. You you said you make the decisions by intuition kind of feel. Did you have a mentor growing up? Was it your dad, your grandfather? None. Was just Anybody? My work ethic, why why I don't know. I, I worked when I was a like, Ten year old, I like, like, uh, shovel coal. Everybody had coal back at the uh, mid fifties. No, coal regions, right? Coal region. Well, everybody yeah. had coal, and, and uh, I didn't know what the hell anthracite was when right. right. he came down to college. It's so what's anthracite? Hard coal. Yeah, it is good coal. It's good heat. Yeah. And uh, anyway, in the neighborhood, we had a lot of older people, people whose uh, uh, brothers that they uh, lived with, or their or their fathers were killed in the war, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a little lady in there by herself, and I'd shovel coal and take her the ashes out, do stuff like that, and give me 50 cents a week or something like that, shovel sidewalks. I always had, did that. So, so no, no, I mean, it was, no, it was, it was it real Yeah, yeah. No, I just worked it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I did. What about friends? You got best friends? You got a best friend? Yeah, you got. I have close friends that uh, I hang around with. Uh, a lot of them have left the area. The people that I graduated from high school with. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's a shame because there's not that many jobs in this area. So mm -hmm. every, basically everybody's left. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I can't leave. I have that building across the street. And, right. and this. Right. And it's okay. It's, it's what I chose to do and I enjoy it. Yeah, you do. How important are relationships as, as we age, 50, 60, 70? Well, you, you, you find out that you have a few real close friends, like I said, and, uh, and uh, I enjoy them, the ones that are still here locally. And uh, it's, it's fun going out, you meet them at dinner, and mm -hmm. you just have a good time. Right. Yeah. 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 Do you have any kind of routine in the morning? What time do you get up? I get up about 4.30. 4.30? 4.30, quarter to 5, and I get down here about 5 15, 5 30. Mm -hmm. Read the newspaper, you can take a look at the paper, and then they get to work. Mm -hmm. Cups of coffee. Cups of coffee. coffee, yeah. yeah. And you can then to what, 10 hour days? So, yeah, I'll um, so hold around one. I'll take a nap, lunch, mm -hmm. have a beer, a couple beers, mm -hmm. take a nap, eat at 3 30, and I'm right back to work. I'm here about 4 15, 4 30 again, and I'll go home Last night I got on the floor at 8. Wow. That's okay. That's uh -huh. what I do. Weekends off? I go over to, I'm always here every weekend. Saturday, Sunday, I just go in. Uh, I might have deliveries. I might have a, a couple of drivers go out on a Saturday because we can't get the loads out during the week. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll go out and deliver Saturday. So I get the trucks loaded for Monday morning. So they go out Sunday night. So you're still driving forklift? Mm -hmm. I can do it. You can get around there. I can do it. I'll bet you can. I'll bet you can. How do you define fulfillment? Well, success probably defines fulfillment. And, uh, we, we've been successful, but I always want to improve and, and do better. I, I mean, that's the way I am. I, want, I always want to sell more beer. At this particular time, uh, we're struggling a little bit because of this, this thing, but we'll be all right. We'll yeah. that. And, the, and people are drinking things other than beer. They're drinking these seltzers and you know, how long is that going to last? I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. You know? so, 
Well, beer's been around a long time, right? It's been around since uh, the Mesopotamians, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so fulfillment and success, though. So, yeah, fulfillment is it, when people talk about it, they say it's not so much achievement, but it's achievement of the right things, right? There's a lot of people that achieve things that aren't, aren't fulfilled, really. This is probably true. And, uh, you know, I don't worry about stuff like that. I mean, I know, <clears throat> I know the, this company has good products and we're not looking to be, <clears throat> excuse me, we're not looking to be 20 or 30 or 40 percent of, of the national beer market. We just want to be a, a piece of it that can keep our people working. That's all I'm looking for. We're not looking to overtake Anheuser Busch or Molson Coors or Miller Coors or anything like that. We're not trying to. We just want our our fair share of the yeah. business, and yeah. it doesn't have to be that much to keep it with, uh, three little breweries. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're fine. So, in terms of fulfillment for yourself, life, right, mm -hmm. Yingling and outside of it, on a scale of one to ten, where would you say you are? Ten being high, how fulfilled well, are you we in were, your life? We were. Pretty, well, I was pretty yeah. much you. Oh, well, me personally. Yeah, um, I know it's hard. You don't talk about yourself. Well, I don't talk about myself, that and much. that's a beautiful thing. Well, I don't know. I guess it is. Uh, it's just the way I am. You know. I, uh, I'm happy just doing what I'm doing. I'm happy I'm healthy. I try to eat good foods to stay healthy. Drink a moderate amount of beer. Strong uh, relationships. Strong relationships. And, you know, what else you want? You get your exercise to work, I guess, right? Moving and walking. Uh, I, do. I do. I mean, you know, when I was a kid, uh, I'd go down to Connie Mac Stadium. And what, well, the first game I ever saw was the A's. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't even know that. Oh, the yeah. went, oh, oh, my old man talks about it. Oh, so I, went, I was down there. I saw them when I was nine, ten. And uh, then, uh, when we go down, when I got into the high school, we drive down to Philadelphia County Max Stadium. It's in the village play. And, and you'd see the Ballantyne scoreboard out there. And then they went out of business. And then the, the vet and the ship scoreboard. And that went down the drain. And here we are with a sponsor with Philly. Yeah, I know. little blurry of class. Little, yeah, beautiful. I love it. That is good. That is good. What about, um, you know, as you continue to age, does death loom? Do you ever think about it? Dying? Yeah, yeah, when you get sick, you do. Know, yeah, yeah, when you get sick, you do. But uh, well, it's probably uh, great. What are you going to do? Right. What are you going to do? You, you know, the average age now is probably 80, 82. Mm -hmm. And uh, two to four years. I know you feel good, but I feel good. So the yeah. idea is take care of yourself. Don't do something stupid. Uh -huh. when, when that day comes, and, and trustfully not for a long time, what, what's your belief about what happens to us? Any belief in something bigger? Uh, I believe I'll be back as soon. You'll be yeah, back at something. Might, I might be DG, the guy that founded this. Thing. Is that right? I might be. Your energy is going to come back. I like to look at it that way. And I might be back in another 100 years, so hoping uh, mm -hmm. I'm watching over by uh, the 8th or 10th generation running the brewery. So if you keep it that way, yeah. you don't really mind it too much. You know, I'll right. be back. You'll be back. You'll be yeah. back. Yeah. So, so do you have a faith in something bigger? God? Well, I'm sure you believe in God. I, I'm not a big church goer. I'm not really religious, but I do believe in uh, uh, prayer and, you know, thank, thank God we're here. Right. right. And thankful for something. Yeah. 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 That sounds good. So people who, who are listening, you know, what, what would you offer to them? And I, I kind of picked up through our conversation. But what's important in life, especially when people get 50, 60, 70, right? Because when we're young, we're driving, right? We're driving, driving. And then that, that People get, you know, kids move out. What would you say to people as they continue to move through this second half of their life? What's important? Well, what I, I would think is important in, in my case with my children, it was important that one, two, three, or four of them uh, came on board with the company and, and the, the opportunities that they had and, and where we came from. You know, we started this thing across the street. There wasn't even electricity. So look at what that man went through. Wow. And the, everything was done by gravity and the, the gaslight or whatever. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I don't know what they did over if there. If you live near here and you haven't done the tour, you got to come up and do it. It's, it's really cool. it's, uh, You know, we get people from all over the country that go on the tour and they're just fascinated by the caves. You get to see the caves, you get to see the brew house, the manufacturing of the cans and bottles, whatever we're doing that particular day. And they see cans going at 900 or something. Hey, wonder who drinks all that beer. Oh, uh, I, know. I know it's nice to be real busy and make sure somebody is drinking it. 
you know, it wouldn't. It is the, the filler wouldn't be spinning around. It is. Them. So it's important. Then I think you, you said it very well. Just and you said it a couple times. You know, remember the past. Look back where you came from and, and, and celebrate. Right. I always do. Yeah. Look what uh, uh, you, you go into the forties and my dad and his brother, who were both uh, his name was Dorman Dorman Yang, mm. and uh, my dad and his brother were both in the war and they were both saw a lot of action mm. and they're lucky they. We're lucky. I'm lucky that they survived it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if one or two of them would have been killed, uh, what would my grandfather have done? Here I was 20 when he died. Mm -hmm. And he would have taken a look at me. I, this kid can't run the career. You know, so uh, I don't know what he would have done with it. Yeah. He probably would have closed it before that because I had an uncle who was in the dairy business mm -hmm. and he wasn't interested in the brewery. He was also in the banking. Uh, area to mm -hmm. also, and uh, another uncle of mine was uh, uh, he was a school teacher out in Arizona, mm -hmm. and you know there's there was no chance of either one of them really taking the brewery over. They couldn't run by itself. So mm -hmm. I don't know, Lord knows what the, my grandfather would have done with the brewery. Yeah, it'd have been different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we were lucky. It was mm -hmm. important. To talk yeah. about luck. I've been lucky. You've been lucky there. Yeah. What else is important? So remember the past, celebrate that, keep your relationship strong. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Well, I, just keep yourself healthy. That's the biggest thing. Right. Stay healthy. Stay yeah. healthy. Yeah. 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 Focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes great sense. So nothing you would do different. As no, I mean, I, I can't go back and say, well, I should have done this. I should have, I mean, you, you always do that, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, could have done this better. I mean, I might have not have done it, uh, done it different, but I would have done it better. And, uh, you know, you, you learn by your past experiences and past mistakes. So yeah. I'm yeah. fine. I'm, I'm satisfied with what's happened to me. I'm lucky as you, I feel like Lou Gehrig. Yeah. Lucky as man on the face. Lucky like as man. You like your baseball too. <laughs> you know, a couple more questions, Dick, and then we'll wrap up. Um, you know, with your success here, the success of the brewery, because I know you don't talk about yours, it, it's everybody's. Um, you've grown financially. You know, and a lot of people looking in, I read some articles about you, that you live a relatively simple life. Why? Well, it's not about the money, huh? No. It, 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 well, no, it's not about the money, but if you if you work hard and, and you're, you're successful, the money will be there. I mean, that's what you're working for. But I, I have no idea. I think somebody... Had me in the Forbes thing, the Forbes 400. And I said, the only way I'm in the Forbes 400 is is if I sell the brewery to somebody that's willing to overpay for it. Right. And I, I'm not going to do that. So mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not there, you know, really. Uh, but, and I told the guy, I said, I really don't want that published. I said, you know, I'm not one of those guys. Yeah. Like 400 people. Well, yeah. He said, well, that's the way we see it, and that's the way we're going to That's the way one of 400 richest people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let them amuse themselves. Yeah, right, right. It's great. Well, I've enjoyed talking more about this than about the business and the money and all that. I want to, I want to get in and understand what makes you tick. And I think that's what people like to listen to, right? They like to hear the stories of other people's lives, their ups, their downs, mm -hmm. their challenges, yeah. you know, their philosophies on life. So as we head out, and I certainly appreciate the time, and I'll be back. Uh, we have three children, and our youngest son, Joey, our middle son, Joey, lives in LA. He loves being and he can't get it in Los Angeles. They're smuggling, so they're smuggling it out. He said, tell, tell he Mr. Yang, he people. said, tell Ty, I pick up a couple cases here that I have on the way back. Um, if you if you were life then, Dick, if you just had to leave a slogan for people, your philosophy boiled down into a slogan, you know, a bumper sticker, they say things like that. Oh, you're looking for something that probably can't get out of my head. What would it be? Just a mantra. You know, your daughters, what would you tell them? Your grandchildren, what would you, what would you tell them about? Life? Well, don't worry about the money that we just spoke about. Don't worry about the money. You work hard, make good decisions, and the money will be there. All right. That's pretty much for a bumper sticker. And love your friends. friends. Love your friends and family. Love your friends and family. Absolutely. Beautiful. So, so work hard. Keep your relationship strong. Love your friends and family. Don't worry about And how many don't kids? Spend, don't spend more than you make. Don't, don't spend more than you make. And have an, have an occasional yingling every now and then. Uh, a couple of days is the best thing in the world for you. It's, it's all good grain and water. That's all it is. There you go. A little bit of alcohol. So yeah, too much. Yeah. Well, it's always great to come back up here, and I certainly appreciate the time and, and the conversation, and I wish you continued 
fulfillment as you define it. Well, that's kind of it. But thank you for the opportunity to do this. Oh, you got it. You got it. Thank you, you guys. It's been a pleasure. So everybody, listen until our ne- next episode. You know, take some insight from Dick. And if you're struggling in some areas of like his life, maybe just exper- experiment with some of his philosophy around life and see how that serves you. Come in and tour the brewery and you'll see what what it was like. He'll be know, here. You can chat. 192 years ago, you'll see what it was like to try to operate a brewery. It's not the same building, but it's in the same location. It is amazing. And it's an interesting tour. It oh, really is. It. There's only one of us in America, and that's us. That's it. Now, before we end, though, you're going to, the brewery's going to be 200 in eight years, right? Well, I'm shooting the glass that one. Yeah. 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 Well, you, you, so yeah. Make, you'll you'll blow past that. that. Well, I'm not making any plans, but uh, let the uh, let the kids do that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Any if ideas for that celebration? You know, that's awesome. up to them. You, know, you make plans, and that's where they jinx you. That's up to them. So, 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 so your daughters, yeah. tell me who, who they are again. Wendy, Debbie. Jennifer and, and Cheryl. Jennifer and Cheryl, you got it. This is filmed right now. Your dad said <laughs> the, the celebration is up to you. It's up to you. We well, have it on film. I just want to be alive to see what they're doing and collecting the steel. You'll probably be driving a Ford Fifth. Probably, yes. yes. There goes Bob. <laughs> I wish you to, to live to honor my friend. <laughs> okay. And remember, everybody, listen, there is one hell of a difference between just living and being fully alive. So wishing you all the best. Take care. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I told you right. What a great story Dick has. And and for me, a really simply powerful perspective on business, of course, and also life. I especially liked when he talked about his knowing that they would succeed when he purchased the brewery. And his response when I when I asked him about fear and risk and uncertainty. You know, it, it those things show up for so many people. It's just that some people, Dick included, think about them differently. And it really got me thinking about how do I think about risk and fear and uncertainty and kind of pushing towards some dreams and goals. I also liked when he talked about the importance of knowing what you do well and keep doing that. It was obvious to me that Dick loves his family and friends intensely, and he knows how important that is to creating fulfillment in his life. And he loves his business and the people that work there. Think about Dick's insight. I encourage you to take two or three things away and begin to experiment with them to create more fulfillment in your life. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast, Back to Life, and share this across your social media so that others in your network can hear Dick and and his thoughts on creating a fulfilling life after 50. Be sure to follow us and continue to create a fulfilling and resilient life yourself. And always remember, there's a hell of a difference between just living and being fully alive. So until next time, peace.